Good afternoon and welcome to Port Heron and Area School District's Memorial Stadium uh, for the annual clash of the Holland Woods Warriors and the Fort Gratiot Lumberjacks here on CPHS 6. Uh, my name is Coach Casey Kashera from Port Heron Northern and it's great to be here today and, and get a look at the future Huskies here. Uh, Fort Gratiot is getting ready to kick off here and immediately following this broadcast we will have the Central uh, Middle School and Chippewa Middle School playing the night game. Getting ready to kick off is Quinn Kotzko here from the 40 yard line and Holland Woods will receive the ball first. Kotzko's kick is taken by Ethan Fike, or excuse me, uh, Ryan Boswick and immediately the tackle is made uh, at about the 31 yard line where Holland Woods will take over on the first possession of the ball game here. Holland Woods is coached by head coach Tom Houle, John Livesey, and a former Husky, Chris Miller. Holland Woods will come out in the no huddle and line up immediately here. Fort Gratiot in the traditional 5-2 defense. Uh, the ball's dropped back and we've got a deep throw to number 83, Kosh Bridge, incomplete there on first and 10. Uh, number 71, Dylan, Dylan Harrison dropped back to make the throw. Be second and 10 now for Helen Woods. Interesting that these two teams uh, going at it here, basically running the same offense and the same defense. Uh, both schools uh, filter on up to Port here in Northern, these two teams' future uh, teammates here. And Helen Woods comes out uh, second and 10 from about the 31 yard line. Deep motion and the handoff is given inside to a number 32, Brian Steele, and a host of uh, Lumberjacks on the tackle there. So bring up a third down and about uh, seven or eight for Holland Woods and as Coach Coach Hool's staff uh, runs the plays in here. First long yardage situation here for Holland Woods to see what they do. Uh, both schools uh, running the triple option offense uh, of Port Huron Northern and uh, the 52 defense. Third and about eight or so here as uh, Ben Haynes underneath the uh, center here. The pitch out to number 23 Ryan Boswick as a host of Lumberjacks make the tackle. It's going to bring up a fourth down for Holland Woods. We have a great night here of football. Uh, it's been a great fall for, for all the area schools here for great football weather. And uh, these kids are getting a first chance to play in Memorial Stadium as they will the next couple years. Holland Woods back to uh, punt. And number two, Alex Johns Moore deep to receive. The ball is downed uh, by number 81, Matt Kolar, where Fort Grash will take over on the 35 yard line. Fort Gratiot is coached by Dave Roberts, uh, Robert Swaffer, Thomas Wagger, and Troy Piper. And they've been doing a great job over the years um, with, their, with their squad. Fort Gratiot has uh, a two and three record and they've scored a lot of points this year. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how Holland Woods uh, attacks this offense here. First and 10, 35 yard line. Uh, Johns Moore under center here and uh, Deep motion by Kotzko. We've got an option look where uh, Johns Moore pulls the ball, brings it out to the perimeter, and is up close to the first first down marker at about the 43-yard line. Be second and short for Fort Gratiot. Great job by the coaching staffs working with the triple option where the quarterbacks have a lot on their shoulders as far as reading the play, uh, deciding whether to give the ball to the fullback or pull it. Then they have the option to pitch it out on the perimeter and Johns Moore did a great job on that first down play. Second short for the Lumberjacks. Inside handoff, oh, Johns Moore pulls the ball up over the 50 yard line, breaks to the outside. He's got a chance to go. Alex Johns Moore takes the ball around the left side. Scores a touchdown for Fort Gratiot, 5.48 to go in the first quarter. Great job recognizing a pull read on the option. His, his key on the defense got him to pull the ball, got onto the perimeter, and did a nice job. So with 5.48 left in the first quarter, Fort Gratiot takes an early lead, 6 to nothing. Oh. 
in defending the option, uh, the defense is, is forced to play uh, assignment football more than ever, where they've got to have somebody on inside on the dive, they've got to have somebody assigned to the quarterback and somebody assigned to, uh, to the pitch man. Fort Gratiot going for two here. Inside handoff and we squeaks in for the two point conversion. Uh, number 43, Jimmy Glombowski, bowls ahead. Fort Crash, it's up 8 nothing with 5.48 left in the first quarter. So good opening drive for the Lumberjacks, and Holland Woods will get their second, uh, second chance with the football here. Also like to take time to acknowledge the, the cheerleaders for, for both schools. Uh, for Fort Gratiot, uh, Paula Carmichael, Jennifer Charles, Christy Duty, Coral James, Morgan Killinen, Killinen, Michaela McBride, Sabrina Parker, Megan Paul, Alexandria Richmond, and coached by Chris Killinen and Mia Trendy. Ladies do a nice job uh, cheering their team on all year and, and their efforts are much appreciated. We won't forget the Highland Woods cheerleaders here coming up, but uh, getting ready to kick off uh, from the 40 yard line is uh, number 41, Aaron Cotter. Short looping kick to about the 35 or 45 yard line. The tackle is made, excuse me, up at the 45. Uh, number 22, Cam Britz on the reception of the kick kickoff. So Holland Woods takes over in their second possession and uh, Fort Gratiot is up eight nothing. And we'll see what uh, Ben Haynes can get going here with his offense here in the second possession of the ball game here. First and 10. Cheerleaders for Holland Woods, Paige Artuso, Stephanie Dickinson, Kelly Driggers, Caitlin Green, Melissa Hunt, Chelsea Lee, Gabriel Miller, Stephanie Moldovan. We'll get the rest here in just a second as uh, Ryan Boswick goes in motion and the handoff is given inside and gets back to just about the original line of scrimmage there. Oh, it'll be first down on a turnover. Fort Gratiot takes over. Azalea Powell, Kayla Ray, Jennifer Recker, Majestic Rich, Amber Stevens, Christina Stone round out the cheerleading team for Helen Woods. They are coached by Sibilia Egan. Coach Roberts, uh, Fort Gratiot team takes over again on the uh, about the 44 yard line, eight nothing with 5:40 left in the first quarter. Number 10, Hunter Potter under center now as the Lumberjacks get ready on first down. Deep motion by Clasco. We've got a pitch to the outside. Nice job by the defensive back out there to string the play out and get a short game for the Lumberjacks. It's a tough play for the secondary there when the when the running back is running the sweep play and he gets outside on the edge. Uh, the running back's got it, or the excuse me, the defensive back has to do a nice job of keeping his inside shoulder on the football and and maintaining that outside leverage so the back doesn't get outside. And right there, number 22, Cam Britz did a nice job of that, and number 80, Gage, no check. Second and about eight for the Lumberjacks as we have deep motion and an inside handoff to the fullback by Potter, which is gonna bring up a third down. Nice job on the last two plays by Holland Woods defense, taking away the perimeter for Fort Gratiot and bottling up the inside. That's a, that's a great job. Third down and six. So it'll be about third and six for the Lumberjacks here from their own 40 yard line as Johns Moore brings back in the play. And you gotta believe with his speed, you might see him out on the edge on the option or some type of a boot here in a third and a long situation here. Deep motion by Evan Sikori. Johns Moore cuts to the inside, squirts his way up to about the 32 or 31 yard line, which is gonna be enough for a first down for Fort Gratiot here. Great job up front by the linemen, uh, led by number 70, David Clive, number 53, Hayden Allen, and a host of other Fort Gratiot linemen there. If I get the numbers here, I'll, I'll get them out to you there. Number 68, uh, Josh Drewyard is over the is over the football as a center for the Lumberjacks here, and and right next to him is number 64, Emilio Sorrentini on first and ten here for the Lumberjacks. 
Deep motion again. We've got an inside handoff, the fullback. Nice job by the Warriors. Number 32 and number 71. Brian Steele and Dylan Harrison on the Harrison in on the tackle there on the inside trap play. It's going to be up, bring up a second long for the Lumberjacks. And uh, now they're probably getting close to four down territory, which, which makes it a little bit easier to make the calls coming up here. But uh, Coach Roberts doing a nice job of getting rotating guys in and keeping them fresh. And, and we've got a second and nine from the 30-yard line. Deep motion, number 20, takes the handoff, or excuse me, the pitch, cuts back inside, works his way up close to a first down. That was Evan Sikori on the pitch there. Nice job of reading his block. Saw he couldn't get outside. Cut it back up. Cut it back up inside for a nice gain. It's gonna bring a third and short for the Lumberjacks. Good vision by Sikori. A lot of times young running backs want to get to the outside right away. And if they see that their offensive linemen haven't gotten them a block to the outside, they stay with it anyway. Sikori did a nice job of cutting that back up there. Third and three. On the 24-yard line, another inside handoff. Nice job by the Warriors' defense, uh, hustling and bottling up uh, number 41, Aaron Cotter. But I think Cotter muscled his way up and was very close to a first down, if not got it. Yes, he did. Again, that was Harrison uh, on the tackle for the Warriors. Dylan Harrison, nice job with number 32, Brian Steele. Going to bring up a first down. Ball's on the 22-yard line. Fort Gratiot putting together a nice drive after the big play on the first drive. They're putting a nice long drive together here with Johns Moore back under center. Sikori in deep motion. We got the inside handoff. The fullback breaks it off the right side, squirts his way down about close enough for a first down. It's going to be close. Carrier. That was Jimmy Glombowski on the carry, working in at fullback there. Coach is doing a nice job of rotating guys in, and he's going to be close to a first down, about a yard short. He'll be second and short here. Drew Yard over the football. We've got number 50, Jacob Maxwell at right tackle also. Second and short for the Lumberjacks. Pitch to the outside. Nice job by the defensive back from Holland Woods coming up and making the play. That's number 23, Ryan Bostwick on the tackle there. Great job as Ethan Fike tried to work to the outside and uh, Bostwick did a nice job keeping that inside shoulder leverage and making the tackle. Gonna be third and short for the Lumberjacks here. About a minute left in the first quarter. We wanna congratulate both teams on uh, a nice season for both teams. Um, these kids started about when school started. It's a long time, and they've worked hard all the way through the season, and their reward is getting to play in a great stadium like Memorial Stadium here tonight. Johns Moore under center. Hands off inside to the fullback on the option. Works his way up, and it's going to be a first down. That's Glombowski again on the carry. He ran tough, hard inside there, keeping his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, put his shoulder down, and carried a couple of Holland Woods defenders with him. Could be first and goal from about the nine yard line. Again, both teams, you know, these guys started practice at about the um, first of school there. And uh, they've done a nice job of, of working hard every day, keeping their grades up, staying eligible. And like I said, getting a chance to play in the Memorial Stadium. As Johns Moore pitches to the outside to Quinn Kotzko, and he, he jumps in for the touchdown. About a nine yard run for Kotzko, got the edge on the sweep. And that's going to bring up a 14-0 lead for the Lumberjacks as they get ready to go for the two-point conversion here. Good perimeter blocking outside by the split end and the wing back as well as the offensive line there uh, for the Lumberjacks. Uh, they had a nice long drive as opposed to their first drive. They had a big play by Johns Moore. And uh, this time they, they worked down the field four, five, and six yards at a time, got in some short yardage situations, and now they are lining up for the first or for the two-point conversion. Got an inside handoff on the two-point conversion, and it looks like they just got in over the line there. That puts Fort Grash it up 16 to nothing. It's number 30, Jacob White. Did a nice job there. Uh, running north and south and getting in for the two-point conversion.
About 26 seconds left in the first quarter. Fort Gratiot has capitalized on their first two possessions, cap, uh, taking advantage of a Holland Woods turnover and a three and out. And just like that, they're up 16 nothing. Again, this is Casey Kashera, uh, coach from Port Huron Northern High School, joining you here today on a great afternoon for football. And uh, Holland Woods and Fort Gratiot finishing up their season in Memorial Stadium. Kick is fielded at about the 41 yard line by number 81, Matt Kohler. Does a great job, gets north and south and works his way all the way down to about the 41 yard line. Great job by that second line there of the kick return team. A lot of times in middle school, you're not quite sure where that football is gonna go. And Kohler did a nice job of, of catching that ball and getting upfield as quick as possible. Fort Gratiot nearly had 12 men on the field there, but got off just in time here. This will be first and 10 for Haynes and the offense for Holland Woods on about the 42 yard line here. Deep motion, we have an inside handoff to the fullback as he works his way up and down to close to the 40 yard line. That was Boswick in motion. Brian Steele with the ball. As Brian Steele, number 32, hits the left side and works his way down to about the 41 yard line. But it's gonna be no gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 for the Warriors here. As Coach Hull, Coach Olivesay, and Coach Miller's team has a chance here inside the 50 to get right back in the football game here. That's the end of the first quarter here from Memorial Stadium. Uh, 16 to nothing, Fort Gratiot here on CPHS 6. Middle school football, we have eight minute quarters here, so there'll be a change of, uh, not change of possession, but changing sides of the field here. And Holland Woods will maintain possession and have the ball second and 10 here as they come out in the second quarter here. Today we have some representatives of the Port Huron Northern freshman football team this year. I want to congratulate Coach Damon and, and Coach Towler on a, a great season. Freshman football team at Port Huron Northern, five and four, and Coach Damon has some of his guys down here on the sideline for Fort Gratiot, and they'll head over to Holland Woods sideline in the second half, and, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see both uh, squads uh, mixed together and, and become the freshman football team at Northern next year, as well as game two, Right after this will be Chippewa Central going at it here at the night game at 5.30 on CPHS 6. And, and both those teams will combine and become the freshman team at Port Huron High for Coach Ryan Mullins and his staff. Second 10 now as Haynes brings the offense back up the line of scrimmage and steals in the backfield with Dylan Harrison and Ryan Bostwick here. We're gonna have a timeout for Holland Woods. Might have an equipment situation here which uh, needs to be taken care of so we can get that 11th guy back on the field there. Coach Tom Hull's staff, as I mentioned, consists of John Livesey and Chris Miller. They're doing a great job with, with the kids over at Holland Woods. Uh, Chris Miller, is, as some might remember his name, was, the, is, was our quarterback last two years over at Port Huron Northern and uh, just did a great job, a three-sport athlete, uh, excellent job in the classroom, had great grades, great leadership, and is going to school at uh, SC4 right now, and he's coaching some football, and looks like he's hopefully gonna be coaching some basketball at Holland Woods, and just doing a great job with those young men, and, and that's a tribute to Chris and, and his family on, on uh, how well he's done the last four years and carrying it right on into college. Okay, looks like we're back to action here. Second and 10 from about the 42 yard line with, with uh, Harrison in motion. We've got a pitch to Harrison on the sweep. He looks to throw it, completes the pass down to just a, probably about the 23 yard line as number 83 Kosh Bridge does a great job of warding off the defender and making a great catch there. Nice play action pass there where Coach Hull had a play call where we were pitching it out to to um, Harrison and he brings the defense up and the receiver runs by the corner. The corner actually had pretty good coverage. It's a great throw and catch by the um, Holland Woods Warriors. Harrison looking to possibly throw again. Receiver was covered. He cuts it down to close to about the 21 yard line on first and 10. 
and it's going to be second long situation for Holland Woods and they're close to the 20 yard line so they are very they're very much in four down territory here with 722 left in the first half of the annual Fort Grash at Holland Woods game here at Memorial Stadium on CPHS 6 be about second nine for Haynes in the offense it's Fort Grash at, uh, in the traditional 52 defense Got an inside handoff to Boswick, and nice job by Quinn Kotzko staying at home on that and making the tackle. The ball carrier stopped by number one, Kotzko. Kotzko just scored the last touchdown for Fort Gratiot on the sweep and getting some time on defense there and, and did a nice job on the counter play off the option and uh, made a nice tackle for a three or four yard loss. It's going to be about third and 12 for the Warriors here. Third down and 12. Harrison is back at uh, left tackle uh, for Holland Woods, joined with number 75, Mitch Maharg, and we'll try to get some of these other linemen here as we as we go. Haynes brings the offense back up, and we've got a timeout for Holland Woods here. Holland Woods, timeout. Like I said, Holland Woods is down inside the. 30 yard line about the 25 so they are definitely in four down territory they don't need to get it all here on the third down play um, and so they took a timeout here to just make sure they've got what they want and we'll be back to action here soon coach Robert's staff like I mentioned earlier is joined by Robert Swaffer coach Thomas Wagger and Troy Piper and had the pleasure of working with these guys the last three or four years as well as the Holland Woods coaches at camps and clinics and whatnot and they've done a great job and and uh, keeping the kids out for football keeping them eligible and being positive with them and just doing a wonderful job both coach Roberts his staff and, and coach Hool. okay after the timeout here Holland Woods back on a third and 12 they come out in the wishbone here Haynes Hands off inside, inside to Ben Steele as he works off tackle and works works the ball back up to about the 20 yard line, 19 yard line. Nice run right there by Brian Steele. Brian Steele, the ball carrier. So that brings up a fourth down for Holland Woods. Indefinite four down territory here, so they're probably looking at some type of a. Maybe possible play action pass to get Haynes out on the perimeter. Something where they can use the athletic ability of him or a Brian Steele or a Ryan Boswick here. Coming back out in the wishbone, it's fourth and eight. Handing off inside to Harrison as he breaks off, off, off right tackle and a host of Lumberjacks are there to make the tackle. They'll come up short and they will turn the ball over here to Dylan Fort Gratiot here with 528 Stop left by. in the second quarter. Fort Crash it up 16-0 here on CPHS 6 on a beautiful afternoon with 528 left in the second quarter here. Highland Woods, a lot of guys that are, are seeing time both on offense and defense, a little bit of smaller squad this year. 17 kids that have that have made it from start to finish to the beginning from the beginning and the end of the season. Fort Gratiot comes in with 34 uh, at student athletes on their roster. have done a nice job sticking with it. So it'll be first and 10 from the 18 yard line. Deep motion as Potter rolls out to his left, works his way back up to the line of scrimmage and is stopped there for about no gain. A first flag on the play possibly to the outside with defenders running at the ball carry might possibly be looking at a face mask or a hold here. As Coach Roberts waits to see what the penalty is going to be. It's going to bring up a second down and, and long for the Lumberjacks unless this is a face mask and it gives the Lumberjacks a short first down here. We have uh, another a great uh, surprise, I guess, or, or, or treat for the eighth graders here tonight. We have the voice of the Huskies, Mr. Rich Merritt, on the mic for him. And like I said, it just gives him a chance to see what it's going to be like to play here at the stadium under the lights, although it's still afternoon today. The Central and Chippewa will get that 
tonight as Jimmy Gomblowski works his way up for a first down close up to the 29 yard line for the Lumberjacks. Jimmy the ball carrier. Be first and 10 for the Lumberjacks here in the second quarter. As Glombowski did a great job of, of taking the handoff, getting north and south, running through a couple ball carriers and getting the first down for Fort Gratiot here. Second and 10 as Alex Johns Moore comes back up under center here from the 29 yard line. Had a little bit of a movement in the backfield and we have a fumble. fumble on the Ball's loose and right now it looks like Johns Moore came back up with it. He did. It's going to bring up a second long there. Looked like there might have been a little bit of confusion on the snap and uh, the backfield and possibly on the line of scrimmage which caused uh, the, uh, the fumble on the, on the play there. Nice break for Holland Woods if they can capitalize here. He's second and 12 now from the 27 yard line as Johns Moore is still under center. Great play action fake to the fullback. We had uh, Quinn Kotzko working on a vertical route upfield and we had nice coverage by Ben Haynes there as of, as Johns Moore's pass falls incomplete which bring up third and long. This is a big play for the Warriors here if they can get a stop here and get the ball back get something going here before the first half. Uh, that's a two score game right now for the Warriors to try to make up here. Johns Moore had a nice job of Getting a good play action fake there, and the line had a nice, the offensive line did a nice job blocking for him, but again, the coverage by Haynes was pretty good. Third and 12 for the Lumberjacks here. Pitch outside to Kotzko as he cuts to the outside, and he's got room. Working his way over the 50 yard line. Quinn Kotzko is going to take it all the way down for a Fort Grash touchdown. Excellent perimeter blocking by the split end and the wing back, and that's going to bring Fort Gratiot to their third touchdown with four minutes and 11 seconds left. Seventy-eight yard run by Kotzko caps off a short drive for the Lumberjacks here, makes it 22 nothing. Fort Gratiot will go for the two-point conversion here, and the two-point conversion is a, is a three-yard play. They have the option to put the ball in the middle of the field, the left hash or the right hash, and they obviously can kick or, or, or run it in or throw it in. Kicking would give them one, and obviously running or throwing would give them two. We have the inside uh, mesh to the fullback and a, and a short pop pass back to the tight end by Johns Moore. And we've got a 24-0 ball game here in the second quarter. I believe that was number 64, Emilio Sorrentini on the grab. Fort Grash it up 24-0 here in the second quarter as Holland Woods gets ready to receive the ball here. Fort Grash has done a nice job of, of kicking the ball to different spots in the kick return, but Holland Woods has done even a, a better job, if I may say, of fielding that ball and getting north and south. Matt Kolar on the last one uh, got about a 10 or 12 yard uh, return on that, uh, running straight up field here. So Josh Juilliard ready to kick off here from the 40 yard line. And again, to kick off here to the left hand side, tough to handle. But it looks like possibly Ryan Boswick got up, or got down on the football, and it's close to about the 32 or 33 yard line. Warriors first down. Holland Woods will take over here. About four minutes and 10 seconds left in the second quarter. Fort Crash has got all its timeouts left, and Holland Woods has one remaining. Quarterback Ben Haynes will bring his offense back up to the line. Number 81, Matt Kolar, is split to the left. First and 10 for the Warriors. It's a nice job on the option. Handing off to the fullback. And that's Jimmy Gombowski just coming up and making a great hit right there. And uh, number 32, Brian Steele. Brian hit the hole hard. And uh, Gombowski just came up and made a great, great tackle there.
looks like young Mr. Gombowski can get it done on offense and defense for the for the Lumberjacks. And bring up a second nine for the Warriors from their 34 yard line. Haynes back under center here as Fort Gratiot's lined up in the 52 defense with their with their strong safety inside. There's a nice uh, read and run by by Haynes on the option. Pulled the ball from the fullback, got up north and south, and bring up a third down for the Warriors. Stop made by number 42, John Jackson. Number 88, David Brown. 34, Paul LeVay. Checking back into the Lumberjacks lineup as number 13, Tyler Thompson, comes off the field. Bring up a third and eight for the uh, Holland Woods Warriors here on their own 34-yard uh, line. Inside handoff to Dylan Harrison. Tackle made by about four or five Lumberjacks there, which will bring up a fourth down to force uh, Holland Woods to uh, have to punt here just before half. As we did last year when uh, we did the game here, Coach Kendall and I, we talked about some some former players from both teams, from from Holland Woods and Fort Gratiot that went on to become Huskies and and uh, from Chippewa and uh, Central that went on to become Big Reds. We'll talk about the Central and Chippewa uh, players in the second game, and here in the second half we'll we'll talk about some some former Lumberjacks and Warriors that went on to be. Uh, Huskies and did a great job in the classroom and on the athletic field. One of those is a player that graduated last year, Matt Thompson, was a three-sport athlete and, and had tremendous grades in the classroom and, and did a great job in football. And his his brother uh, Jack is number 52 on the Fort Gratiot uh, eighth grade team this year. We'll get to some more of those uh, former players in the second half here. Fort Gratiot comes up first and ten from the 44-yard line. In a double tight end formation now. And we've got a counter play to Kotzko on the handoff from Johns Moore and a nice open field tackle by Matt Kolar. Kotzko did a great job of breaking to the outside on the counter and Kolar did a nice job of making an open field tackle and saving a touchdown. That's not easy to do when you're playing in the secondary and there's a lot of open field. He broke down nicely and made the sure tackle. Matt Kolar has been very impressive for the Warriors here today. It's going to bring up a first down for the Lumberjacks here with about two minutes left in the first half from about the 25-yard line as Alex Johns-Moore brings them back up to the line of scrimmage here in the wing formation. Got an inside trap play, and that's Jimmy Glombowski. A nice job of reading his block by the pulling guard and squirts his way up to about a five or six yard gain which is going to bring up a second and three or four here and closing in on the end of the first half here of our first game here of the doubleheader at Memorial Stadium here on CPHS 6. I'm Coach Casey Kashera from Port Here Northern. We've got Holland Woods and Fort Gratiot going at it here. Fort Gratiot's up 24-0 and we've got the night game with Central and Chippewa. Second and short for the Lumberjacks. They switch their wing formation to the left now with an inside handoff, and Johns Moore pulls the ball, works his way up for another first down for the Lumberjacks. Basically right there with the flow of the option and the, and the step by the fullback draws the defenders to the fullback, and Johns Moore did a nice job of pulling that ball and working, I guess, what they call outside the back door there and um, did a nice job of getting up north and south there with the offensive lines doing a nice job for Fort Gratiot at creating holes for these guys. Going to be first and, first and 10 here from about the 13-yard line. About 51 seconds left here in the first half. Number 72, Zach Fisher playing left guard right now, or excuse me, left tackle, doing a nice job over there. Hand off inside to Glombowski, he spins, breaks a tackle, runs through a couple defenders, and works his way all down to the goal line. Nice job by Jimmy Glombowski. Jimmy Glombowski Has great here. vision, breaking tackles, staying north and south, running hard. As a coach, you want your running backs to be able to break a, at least one tackle on every play, 
as Fort Gratiot looks like they call their first time out here uh, with the ball down inside the five yard line on the left hash. It's going to be a second and short here for the Lumberjacks. Very impressed with Glombowski today, his running and his tackling on defense. He's doing a nice job there, but he couldn't get it done without the offensive line up and up in front of him there. Fifteen seconds left in the uh, half here, and Holland Woods right now, if they can get a big stop right here going into halftime, create a little bit of momentum for them coming out here in the second half. Fort Gratiot still has two timeouts left. One, another former player we talked about, Matt Thompson from, who was a Fort Gratiot uh, former player, and, and Holland Woods had uh, Chris Miller, one of their coaches, who was a quarterback over there and obviously a quarterback for Port Huron Northern, three, another three, three sport athlete that did a great job in the classroom, and just like most of these young men are, are, have done out here all year for Coach Hool and Coach Roberts. Potter under center now, pulls the ball, works his way back up inside. Nice job by Holland Woods holding him there as Potter worked his way inside, probably down close to the one yard line. And it's gonna be first down for the Lumberjacks and with about eight seconds left, they've got time for about one play, possibly two if it's a pass and they take their time out. They've taken their second time out here. Potter comes back in, leading the Fort Gratiot offense here. Excuse me, they did not take their time out, so this will be the last play of the first quarter. Potter works to the outside, and a great tackle inside by two or three Holland Woods Warriors there. Excellent job by Brian Steele and Dylan Harrison again, and they stop Fort Gratiot here going into score at the end of the half, which brings our half to a close. Fort Gratiot Lumberjacks 24, Holland Woods Warriors zero, and we will be back for the second half of this ball game. Stay tuned. Welcome back here to the second half here at Port Huron Memorial Stadium on CPHS 6, Fort Crash at Lumberjacks and Holland Woods Warriors begin the second half here. I'm Coach Casey Cachera, and the Lumberjacks are up 24-0 here at the beginning of the third quarter as the Warriors get ready uh, to kick off here with at the second half and uh, nice job by uh, Coach Killinan and Coach Trendy's cheerleaders there. They had a nice banner for the Lumberjacks to come out for the second half. And uh, we're ready to kick off here as uh, number 80, Greg Nochak, uh, is going to do the kicking duties for Coach Hool's Warriors here starting the second half as they squib down to about the 35-yard line, fielded nicely by number 88, uh, David Brown there, uh, secures the uh, kickoff and Coach Roberts and his staffs, Fort Grash, Fort Grash at Lumberjacks will take over here first and 10 from about the 36 yard line as Alex Johns Moore did a great job in the first half along with Hunter Potter rotating in at quarterback uh, getting ready for the second half here for the Lumberjacks. The Warriors here uh, can get things going here in the second half here with a nice stop uh, on the Lumberjacks here and get the ball back uh, to try to get something going here in the second half as number 74, uh, Michael Greer, comes back onto the field and it's going to cause Fort Gratiot here to take a timeout. Coach Roberts doing a lot of substituting here, doing a great job getting uh, lots of guys in the game here and Fort Gratiot has to take a timeout to avoid a, a penalty here uh, to start the uh, second half. Uh, I want to get a chance to uh, talk about all the young men here today who have who have worked so hard at the beginning of the year and we've mentioned uh, number 14 Ben Haynes, uh, number 22 Cam Britz, these are the Holland Woods Warriors, number 23 Ryan Bostwick, number 32 Brian Steele, number 44 Devin Hayes, number 55 James Loxton, number 62 Ross Smith, number 65 Clay Kimball, number 66 Stephen Moody, number 67 Quinton Picklehopped, 
number 70, Jordan Scott, number 71, Dylan Harrison, who's done a nice job, made a big throw in the first half and lots of tackles here for the Warriors. Uh, number 75, Mitch Maharg. Number 77, Travis Wessel. Number 80, Gage Nocek. Number 81, Matt Kohler, who's made some great open field tackles at corner and, and done a nice job on, on the kick return team. And number 83, Kosh Bridge. We'll get to the rest of the Fort Gratiot uh, roster through the second half here as they come up on first and 10 as Johns Moore works the hands off inside to number 41, Aaron Cotter. And the Warriors do a nice job there of, of stopping him for a short gain here in the second half. Fort Gratiot uh, has had some big plays in the first half by Quentin Costco and Alex Johns Moore, as well as some tough inside running by Jimmy Glombowski. They've had some big plays on some drives and they've churned it out for five or six yards at a time. As uh, Johns Moore brings the Lumberjacks up here on second long. Deep motion in the handoff to the fullback as he pulls the ball, works to the outside, gets up close to about the 45-yard line. Well, he'll be just short of the first down, I believe, as the clock still runs. Looks like it's going to bring up a third and one for the Lumberjacks here. Uh, I mentioned Hunter Potter, number 10, doing a nice job at quarterback also. Hunter O'Hare is number 12. Tyler Thompson, number 13. Evan Sikori has made some nice runs at wingback for Coach Roberts. He's number 20. Number 22, Tyler Doherty. Number 23, Ethan Fike. Number 24, Rodney Moss. And we will get to the rest of the Lumberjacks here in a second as it's third and one here in Holland Woods has both inside linebackers stunning and a nice job by the Lumberjacks blocking down on the linebackers and number 24 Rodney Moss works his way up for a first down over the over the 50 yard line. Great job by the offensive line there as Moss gets the first down. Number 30 for the Lumberjacks Jacob White. Number 34, Paul LeVay. Number 41, Aaron Cotter. Number 42, John Jackson. Number 43, of course, Jimmy Glombowski. We've mentioned a lot here tonight, making some nice tackles on defense and running hard at fullback. Number 50, Jacob Maxwell. Number 52, Jack Thompson. Number 53, Hayden Allen. Number 57, Kevin Land. First and 10 for the Lumberjacks here on about the 44-yard uh, line as Johns Moore looks to run the option, pulls the ball. And a nice open field tackle over there by, I believe, number 83, Kosh Bridge. And uh, Johns Moore works his way up for about a three to four yard gain as we've got a lot of substitution going on for both teams. And that's great to see all the young men getting a chance to get in here. Uh, number 57 is Kevin Land for the Lumberjacks. Number 60, Kevin Cordes. Number 62, Austin Duckworth. 63, Jordan Kurtz. 64, Emilio Sorrentini. Brings us back to action here with 5.43 left. It's second and about seven from the 43-yard line. And Alex Johns Moore works the option. The pitch is, is deep, and number 23, Ethan Fike, recovers. That could have been disaster for the Lumberjacks, and they were fortunate enough to get on the football there as uh, that's going to bring up a third and long right now. And Helen Woods needs a big stop here in the third quarter with about 5.17 left as the Lumberjacks are up 24-0. Uh, Max Engler is number 65. Josh Druyard is number 68. He's been playing center tonight. Number 70 is David Clive. 72 is Zach Fisher. 73 Mitchell Schrader. It's third and about 16 for the Lumberjacks here as Alex Johns Moore brings him up to the line of scrimmage again. Kotzko in deep motion. The pitch is outside to Kotzko. He does a nice job of weaving his way through and getting over midfield close down to about the 37-yard line. It's going to be very close to a first down. Nice call by Coach Roberts of, of getting a great athlete out on the edge there. And Helen Woods did a nice job of making him cut back and forth, but Kotzko uses that athletic ability there and, and works his way up. And it's going to be fourth and short. Good job by Holland Woods, and right now they need to stop here to uh, take over the football with 424 left in the quarter. Zach Fisher is number 72 for the Lumberjacks. Mitchell Schrader, 73. Michael Greer, number 74. Number 84 is Nick Harding. It's fourth and short here for the Lumberjacks as Johns Moore gets ready to take the snap. Works inside. Gombowski takes the handoff, and a great job by number 44, Devin Hayes, and number 55, 
James Loxton. They stop Klombowski short. The defensive line for Holland Woods does a nice job. They take over first and 10 on change of possession here. Great job by Coach Houle's staff, Coach Livesey, Coach Miller. Did a nice job getting a, getting their guys back up for the second half here. It's tough when you're down 24 nothing, And now Ben Haynes is going to get the offense going here. Excuse me, that's number 71, Dylan Harrison. And it's first and 10 for the Warriors. Uh, number 86 is Aurelio Masabrio for the Lumberjacks. Number 88 is David Brown. Number 94 is Drew Johnson. 96 is Zach Fournier. And 98 is Travis Stevens. As Harrison takes the Warriors here first and 10, drops back. Nice ball. The intended receiver right there was Ryan Bostwick, and Harrison was under tremendous pressure by the Lumberjacks, and he running the wheel route was Bostwick, and uh, Harrison put it out there for him, and the defensive backs for Fort Gratiot did a nice job defending that right there. Holland Woods down 24 nothing, trying to get something going here. Great call, and uh, almost converted on the big play. Second and 10 now for the Warriors, and and... We talked about some of the players in the first half, former players from Holland Woods and Fort Gratiot, and um, we actually have another coach for Holland Woods. It's a former Fort Gratiot Lumberjack and Port Huron Northern Husky, and that's Coach Tom Hull. As Harrison drops back again, and he is sacked in the backfield by number one, Quinn Kotzko, I believe. Did a nice job on the backside rushing, and uh, it's going to bring up a third and long for the for the Warriors. Coach Hull was a defensive lineman for Coach Delkey back in the 80s. I'm going back a little ways here. And was a Fort Gratiot Lumberjack and is now a teacher and coach at Holland Woods and, do, and doing a great job. It's going to bring up a third and 16 from the 35-yard line for the Warriors with about three minutes left here in the second half at Memorial Stadium here on CPHS 6 on a beautiful night and these young men are fortunate enough to finish their season off at Memorial Stadium and it's over 50 years old and 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 it's a tribute to uh, soldiers that were fall that had fallen and gave their lives in World War II. Uh, Brick Fowler was the originator basically got the stadium built as Kotzko makes another play in the backfield on Ryan Boswick for another loss and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Uh, Cecil Brick Fowler was the original athletic director and, and football coach at Port Huron High School and he spearheaded uh, people in the community to get the stadium built. It's over 50 years old and as I said it's a tribute to the fallen soldiers of World War II and it's a great tribute to, to uh, Brick Fowler who I said um, basically got this stadium going and the Brick Fowler Trophy is is what uh, Port Huron High School and Port Huron Northern play for each year as Matt Kolar downs the football on the punt as Fort Gratiot takes over. The Brick Fowler Trophy is played for annually by Port Huron High School and, and, and Port Huron Northern and, and congratulations to Coach Ryan Mullins and his staff. They took the Brick Fowler Trophy home this year for the Big Reds and had a, a great season uh, winning the Mac Blue uh, division and going on to the playoffs in Coach Mullins' first year and we congratulate him and his staff and his players on a fine year. Fort Grash, it's up 24-0. This is their first possession here of the second, excuse me, second possession here of the second half and uh, Holland Woods did a great job on their last possession st defensively stopping Fort Grash it and Looks like uh, Hunter Potter is back under center as they take over here on the 30-yard line, first and 10 uh, for the Lumberjacks. Highland Woods has both backers up looking to stunt and make something happen here, and they do. We have a fumble on the snap here, and it looks like Fort Gratiot recovered. It's going to bring up a second and 10 or second and 11 here for the Lumberjacks. A nice job by the Warriors. They're trying to get something here to get the football back and cause something, cause some havoc or some chaos up on the on the line of scrimmage there. And it's tough for the quarterback when there's five, uh, six, seven, eight guys up on the line of scrimmage. Potter back under center. It's second and eleven. He works to the outside in the option. And number twenty-three, Ryan Bostwick. Quick to jump on the uh, pile there after number 13, Tyler Thompson, recovered the fumble. It's third and long for the Lumberjacks here in the third quarter. 
looks like Johns Moore is going to come back in with the play here. And they've been very successful getting outside on the edge here on the last two or three drives to Quinn Kotzko, who's done a nice job reading his blocks by the offensive line. Wouldn't be surprised to see that again here with uh, Fort Gratiot bringing a lot of heat with their linebackers. Third and 17 here. Nice play action pass there as uh, number 63, Jordan Kurtz, the tight end, worked up field. Johns Moore found him. He was, he was definitely open and uh, just couldn't come up with the handle on that one. It's going to bring up a fourth down here for Fort Grash. A great call there by Coach Roberts and his staff with the linebackers blitzing. Nice job on that uh, play by Holland Woods, too, bringing a lot of heat on that. Well, Coach Damon and his freshman crew from Port Huron Northern moved over to the Highland Woods side for the second half. And uh, like I said, at the end of the game here, both teams will come together and talk about getting a chance to play together next year as Johns Moore completes his pass up to Quinn Kotzko again. And that's going to turn the ball over to Highland Woods on downs. A great catch by Kotzko, but it was fourth in a, in a long ways there. And... Uh, Helen Woods will take over with their best field position of the day, pretty close to the best, 31-yard uh, line here in the second half. Again, we talked earlier about some of the former players that have played at both schools, and one that comes to mind is, is Duke Campbell, who graduated in 1999 from Port Huron Northern. He was a lumberjack and was a three-sport athlete. and ended up walking on at Michigan State University as Boswick takes the pitch and is dropped in the backfield by three or four Lumberjacks. And Duke Campbell was a tremendous football, hockey, baseball player. Great grades, did a great job for the Huskies in all sports and in the classroom for four years. Went on to Michigan State and walked on the football team and currently holds the record for most pump blocks in a season there. So his work ethic and his determination in the classroom and on the playing field really paid off for him down the road. He's successful, successful now. Timeout called here with... 33 seconds left in the third quarter. It's a great play there by Fort Gratiot as, as they just bottled up Boswick. He had nowhere to go. Boswick did, did a good job of covering that football up as, as he was dropped in the backfield there. Going to bring up second and 14 for the Holland Woods Warriors here, closing the end of the third quarter. A couple other former players we, we'd like to mention and talk about. Uh, Matt Reynolds was a was a former, uh, I believe, Holland Woods Warrior, and and he was a another three sport athlete, a football, basketball, baseball player. Had tremendous grades, uh, tremendous work ethic and athletic ability, as well as a, just a great young man. He went on to receive a scholarship at Central Michigan and played football up there for five years and, and did a wonderful job and and again you see a lot of names we're bringing up here that were two and three sport athletes and and just made sure that they had fun in each sport and and did a great job in the classroom and and um, enjoyed their high school experience which is which is what it's all about having a great experience we'll talk about some of the uh, great past Big Reds here in the second game as Chippewa and Central play the nightcap tonight and Ben Haynes is under center again, a second and 14 here. As he looks to drop back to throw, does a nice job of throwing the wheel route out again to Ryan Bostwick and uh, just couldn't come up with a handle on that. That was a great pattern and a great throw by Bostwick and Haynes on the throw and they just couldn't come up with it. Fort Gratiot's putting great pressure on him and Haynes is showing a lot of poise back there in the backfield. Third and about 14 here. With about from about the th just just over the 35 yard line close to the 36 yard line here and I'm guessing that their coach Hull and his staff are thinking they're in two down territory here down 24 nothing and uh, definitely inside here Haynes is back looking to throw again he's looking for Kolar does a nice job of rolling out completing the pass and Kolar works up for a first down excellent excellent poise by Ben Haynes there Matt Kolar sees him scramble, works back to the outside, makes the catch, and then does a nice job of realizing where the sticks are. 
gets up for probably about a 15 or 16 yard gain. As you see, Haynes is, is flush from the pocket. He's got somebody in his face. Kolar does a nice job of scramble to the outside. Great catch with his hands. Gets up field. Nice open field tackle there by the defensive back from Fort Gratiot, but Kolar had already got the first down. It's a great job of catching the ball with his hands. You see a lot of of young kids now catching the ball with their body and, and, and so forth. And Kolar did a nice job of concentrating on the football there. Nice job as uh, number 32, Brian Steele, works upfield on the option and running north and south and gets himself about four or five yards there. Excellent job by the Holland Woods offensive line as the third quarter comes to a close here. And the Warriors got something going now. Uh, Coach Hool and, and Coach Miller and Coach Olivesay has mi have mixed it up on this possession with some play action passes. Haynes has done a nice job. And they've got a second and five here going in on the 25 yard line. And it's a lot easier to call plays on second and five and, and third and one and second and two as opposed to third and long and so forth. So nice job here. and to start the fourth quarter and Fallon Woods can punch one in here and, and get a stop on Fort Gratiot on the next series, anything can happen. Teams are changing side here at the beginning of the fourth quarter here. Again, reminder, right after this, we have the Chippewa and Central uh, game on the nightcap here. Uh, as they go at it and they get a chance to play under the lights and it's a great opportunity for these young men that have worked so hard from beginning of the school year all the way up until now. The coaching staff, the, 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 the football players, the cheerleaders, their coaches have worked hard every every day and they deserve a chance to play in this beautiful stadium here, Port Huron Memorial Stadium. So Helen Woods who, who has been led down the field by Haynes, has done a nice job and big catch by uh, Matt Kolar. Come up with a second and five here from their 25 yard line and they're threatening to score. Haynes takes the snap and, and looks inside to Brian Steele who does a nice job of carrying about two or three Lumberjacks with him. Uh, number 70, 70, David Clive finally brings him down but uh, Steele worked up and possibly had a chance there uh, that he might get a loss, but did a great job of at least getting back to the original line of scrimmage to bring up a third and five uh, for the Warriors. They got two downs to get five yards here, so we'll see what Haynes brings them up to the line of scrimmage and is looking for here. Deep motion as the pitch goes back to uh, number 23, Ryan Bostwick. Stops short, looks to pass there, and the Warriors are on the scoreboard. Great job. Again, they went back to the sweep, trying to draw defenders up, and the split end does a nice job of working his way into the end zone and catching the, the touchdown here, which makes it 24 to six for the Warriors. Great call by Coach Hool, Coach Livesey, and Coach Miller here. Going for the two-point conversion. Haynes brings him back up under center. A fumble on the snap, and it looks like uh, it's recovered by Fort Grash, and it's, it's a moot point, though it doesn't matter on the uh, extra point. And great job by the Warriors with 7.13 left in the fourth quarter. It's 24-6, Fort Grash it over Holland Woods. For, uh, Holland Woods has had some nice success with the running the sweep and, and running the pass off of it, and that's tough to defend. The corner and the safeties have to be disciplined to stay as deep as the deepest receiver. And nice, nice job right there by, I think it was either Kosh Bridge or Matt Kolar. And he did a nice job of slipping behind the corner there. And Boswick hit him for the eight yard touchdown pass there to bring it to 24 to six. So Fort Grasher will get, get ready to receive the football here and, and we'll see what Holland Woods has in store for him on the kickoff. Both teams have two timeouts left and talking about uh, former players uh, that have done a great job and, and, and moved on to uh, 
bigger and better things. We have quite a few of them. And like I said, we'll get to some of those uh, former Big Reds here in the uh, second game. But uh, another former player is uh, Eddie Elbers, who graduated in 1997 and was a, a lumberjack and a, and a captain and a, a three-sport athlete up at Port Huron Northern is doing a great job as Quinn Costco takes the kickoff and, and works hard up to about the 42-yard line. And there's some hitting going out there now. Helen Woods hustles down and makes a great tackle, and uh, Fort Gratiot will take over here first and ten. Helen Woods has done a great job staying right up here with Fort Gratiot. They've rotated their 17 guys in throughout the game and uh, playing some offense and defense, and they've all done a nice job uh, here tonight. Really impressed with Ben Haynes on that last drive, uh, throwing the football on the big third and 15 to Matt Kolar to get him the first down, and uh, just orchestrating the offense down the field with, with uh, Fort Gratiot bringing a lot of pressure. He showed a lot of poise in there at... Uh, quarterback okay Alex Johns Moore brings the Lumberjacks back up here on the 41 yard line got a penalty here to stop play probably looking like an illegal motion uh, or not set for a second here possibly by Fort Gratiot as the officials talk to the Holland Woods captains, it's looking like it's going to be first and 15 for the Lumberjacks here to start off. Not how Coach Roberts wants to finish this, get this fourth quarter going here. Holland Woods has a big drive, scores, does a nice job on the kickoff coverage because it looked like Costco could break that. And now they start off with a first and, uh, fif first and uh, 15 here. Okay, from the 42, excuse me, from the 36-yard line, Johns Moore brings the Lumberjacks back up to center, uh, back underneath center here. Working the option, he hands off to Glombowski straight ahead on the option, and Glombowski just barrels his way upfield for close to about a 10-yard gain. It's going to bring up second and second about eight or so here. Great job. Uh, very impressed. Uh, Jimmy Glombowski doing a nice job hitting that hole and running full speed north and south and getting everything he can. And they obviously the Fort Gratiot offensive line is doing a great job too. Second and nine from the 43-yard line. Johns Moore still in at quarterback. Option back to Glombowski, and he just does not want to go down. Excellent run. Number 71, Dylan Harrison, and number 62, uh, Ross Smith in on the tackle, and Glombowski just fighting for every yard he can get. I think Coach Damon's going to like him next year up at Port here in Northern on the uh, freshman football team, as well as all these young men. But really, Glombowski has really showed a tough, tough running uh, style today, which is – much appreciated by coaches with the running backs in the backfield, no matter what type of offense you run. Back inside to Gombowski again. This time, Johns Moore pulls on the option with his read, and he breaks to the outside, and he's got a chance to take it all the way. Knocked out of bounds by Ben Haynes at about the 12-yard line, and Ben Haynes has been all over the field tonight, too, and he just saved a touchdown for the Warriors. Great job by, by Johns Moore. Ran the option three consecutive plays. His first two reads... Took him to the fullback, the third one. Uh, the, defen the defenders collapsed on the fullback. He pulled the ball, got to the outside, and had a big play. With 5.51 left here in the, the fourth quarter, Fort Gratiot leads 24-6 as Johns Moore brings them back up the line of scrimmage on the 14-yard line. Got to mention the blocking by the offensive line. And on the option again, Johns Moore pulls the football and does a nice job of working his way up for about a five or six yard gain. Again, we talked about in the first half, the, the discipline and the assignment football that the defense has to play when playing the option. And obviously both teams are running it, but it's tough to simulate in practice. And um, Fort Gratch is doing a nice job of, of running it. It's going to be about second and three here from about the seven-yard line, so Fort Gratiot can get the first down. Probably looking for some type of option again, the way they've been running. They're running an inside counter. Nice job by number 70, Jordan Scott, on the play there. Ethan Fike took the counter, worked to the left side, and Scott did a nice job of staying home, breaking down, and making the sure tackle. 
lot of times you'll see young players fly up with their head down and try to make the, the, the great hit, but uh, Jordan Scott did a nice job of making the sure tackle there at, at his uh, defensive lineman position. Third and four now uh, for the Lumberjacks on the on the loss of the play there. Johns Moore working the working the play action pass as he works the pop pass to the tight end, and that looks like Jordan Kurtz. Number 63, Jordan Kurtz. Jordan Kurtz on the catch there, on the seven yard catch by Kurtz from Johns Moore. That's going to bring the score to 30 to six for the Lumberjacks on a nice call there with with linebackers bringing pressure, tight end just kind of works his way upfield there, and Johns Moore just throws a nice little pop pass to him there for the touchdown. So again, the Lumberjacks uh, coming up for their two-point conversion here. 4.29 left here in this, this fourth quarter of the Holland Woods Fort Gratiot game. Fort Gratiot just goes up 32, 30 to six here. As Kotzko goes in motion, he takes the sweep to the outside. Now he works back and, and tosses the ball in for the two-point conversion to number 84, Nick Hardig, uh, working a play that uh, Helen Woods has been successful with tonight with running the sweep and, and throwing the uh, play-action pass as the defensive backs come up. That's tough because Costco has been so successful running the sweep tonight, and, and it makes you want to come up and make the play as a defensive back. But you got to cover that guy, the deepest receiver in your zone. And uh, nice nice play by uh, Kotzko there to uh, Hardig, which brings the score to 32-6 to with 4.29 left here in the fourth quarter of the ball game. So Holland Woods will get the ball here again, both teams having their two timeouts uh, left. And, and talking about players that have, have gone through, uh, a player that's a uh, senior right now at, at Port Here Northern, uh, two guys that come to mind are uh, Andrew Fidel and Billy Fowler, and they're two guys that will graduate this year with, with great grades, and, and they're multiple sport athletes, and they did a great job for four years uh, at Port Here Northern, and, and they will go on to do, to, to do great things in whatever they do. But the underlying theme of this for the young kids that are, that are playing tonight is, Got to get it done in the classroom first and, and be a good student and respectful and, and courteous and, and have fun on the athletic fields, whatever you do. And uh, the sky's the limit for you when you when you get through high school and enjoy the, the four years that you have. But those are two more current Huskies that are in June will soon be graduating Huskies as Fort Gratiot kicks the ball off and number 83, Kosh Bridge, takes it and, and works his way up over the 25 yard line of 30 and he doesn't want to go down. That's a great job by Bridge. They're not wanting to go down as uh, four or five uh, Lumberjacks uh, work to take him down as there's a flag on the play. It could be a possible face mask here at the end of the play because Bridge just did not want to go down here. That's something that Coach Hool and his staff and, and Coach Roberts, you know, and any coaching staff, you know, no matter what the score is in the game, guys like Bridge and, and, and the whole Holland Woods team, they're working hard until the, the end of the game there, and that just shows the work ethic on, on their part. They've worked hard all year, and, and like I said, their reward is getting a chance to play here in Memorial Stadium. So it looks like we had a, a face mask there, and it's going to be first and 10 from the 39-yard line for the Holland Woods Warriors as they come out in the wishbone again as, as Haynes, who directed the last drive beautifully all the way down. As he rolls out, and he looks to run it. He's got the edge. Nice block by Kolar, and Haynes works his way up close to midfield and really close to a first down here for the Warriors. It's just going to bring up a second and short here. Great job on that play as Haynes brought the Warriors out in the wishbone offense, and uh, which you can do multiple things out of, run the option and run some counters. And, and he just used his backs as a lead blocker, and his receiver got a nice block downfield. And it's going to bring up a second and short, which is a nice situation here for the Warriors to be able to call whatever they want. Clock is ticking here in the fourth quarter with 3.36 left as Fort Gratiot is up 32-6 to six here in these young men's final game of their eighth grade career where they'll move on to Port here in Northern next year. Haynes brings him out in the wishbone again. Going to have to hurry to get the playoff. Just does. 
runs the fullback steal, and he does a great job of getting the first down and breaking tackles as number 70, David Clive, uh, makes the tackle. But uh, that's a great job as the uh, play clock was running down there. Haynes showed poise, got the playoff, and uh, Brian Steele did a nice job of getting the first down there uh, for the Warriors here. So it'll be first and 10, about the 49-yard line, as uh, Matt Kolar brings the play in for Ben Haynes. On the replay, you can see a nice job by the offensive line there, and 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 uh, Brian Steele, like I said, just works his way up to the first down, running very similar to how Jimmy gombowski has been running for Fort Gratiot tonight. First and ten with deep motion here, and running the sweep again. This is number 22, Cam Britz, and there's that same guy again, Quint Costco, doing a nice job coming up and making the play in the backfield, which is going to bring up a second and long for the Warriors. Be about second and 14 now from the 47 yard line and again talking about former players and we mentioned uh, how uh, coach Damon and his freshman team uh, are here supporting both teams and coach Damon was a former player of ours a multiple sport athlete who did a nice job a defensive lineman for us as Haynes drops back scrambles to the outside can't break free of number 22 Tyler Doherty as he brings him down and it's going to be third and long that's a great job by Doherty as, as Haynes gets to the outside there he's got a lot of green grass to run but again coach Damon who's done a nice job with this, the Port Huron Northern freshman football team another former player uh, was a was a Holland Woods Warriors for coach Dave Spielberg and uh, did a nice job in his four years at Port Huron Northern so it's going to be third and 18 from the 43-yard line for Haynes and the Warriors offense here. Trying to get something going here at the end of the game as he drops back. Looks to throw the slant. Hits Kolar over the, over the middle of the field and does a nice job, Matt Kolar does, of getting about 10 or 12 yards back. That's a great job. Haynes is throwing poise, throwing the football today. It's going to bring a fourth and 10 here for the Warriors who have to go for it here. It's 32-6. to six. Minute 14 left for, for the Warriors trying to get something going here. And Haynes has done a nice job showing poise on the last two or three drives. He's done a nice job the whole game, but particularly the second half, bringing them out, scoring, uh, converting first downs on third and long, and uh, running the ball very nicely for him. Fourth and 10 for the Warriors here as they come out. We've got a nice job there by Dylan Harrison again, and he does a nice job of getting the ball to Kosh Bridge on the sweep pass. That's been a, a favorite play of Holland Woods and of Fort Grass that just used it a second ago, and Haynes, who did a nice job of getting the ball out to Harrison. Harrison does a nice job of lofting that football up just enough so Kosh Bridge could run Kosh Bridge could run under run underneath it, excuse me, and get the touchdown with 38 seconds left here. It's 32 to 12 now as Holland Woods lines up. As you can see, Harrison's got two or three guys in his face, does a nice job. Bridge gets a step or two on the defender, then just simply outruns him toward the end of the play. Good hustle by the four Gratia defensive backs, but that's a great play by the Warriors there. Both teams have utilized that play well tonight. So we got two men in motion as the ball is, is handed off to Brian Steele, and he works his way in for the two-point conversion there to make it 32 to 14. 38 seconds left in the half, and a great job by by Holland Woods sticking with it. And like I said, you can't say enough about Ben Haynes in the second half, and and the offensive line of the Warriors did a nice job there of of giving protection and uh, getting that last score here. Good job as you see the replay again. Harrison's got a nice arm and done a nice job there. Good poise and good catch. Well, congratulations to, to both coaching staffs, Coach Dave Roberts, Robert Swaffer, Thomas Wagger, Troy Piper from the Fort Gratiot Lumberjacks, and Holland Woods Warriors, coached by Tom Houle, John Livesey, and Chris Miller. They've done a nice job with, with both of their teams here tonight as we wind down the last 38 seconds of this ball game. And we've got Chippewa and Central coming up right after this. And uh, we're looking forward to a, to a great game there. But this last 38 seconds here as the kickoff by number 80, Gage Nocek. 
does a nice job kicking the ball off to about the 30-yard line, and Quinn Kotzko takes the football, and anytime he takes a hold of the ball, there's a chance for him to break it as he tries to get to the outside and does a nice job of, of making the tackle by there. Again, number Matt, number 81, excuse me, Matt Kolar again. Does a nice job for him as Kotzko, who's got great game-breaking ability, couldn't get the edge, and Kolar's done a nice job on special teams as well as at wide receiver and defensive back tonight. Well, that's going to bring us down to the last 31 seconds here of the fourth quarter as, as Fort Gratiot is up 32 to 14, 14 here on CPHS 6 on Memorial Stadium. As you see, Kolar making a great tackle there on the outside on Kotzko as Alex Johns-Moore brings up the Lumberjacks here for the uh, last drive here of the, um, the game. And it's looking like they're waiting for a wide receiver to come out here and uh, get in on the play. The handoff is inside uh, to Gombowski. Excuse me, Johns Moore pulls the football. We're going to have a penalty. Uh, it's going to be a illegal formation by the Lumberjacks. Uh, trying to get different guys in the game, which was great. And didn't have enough guys in the line of scrimmage. Uh, but nice job by Johns Moore, who's read the option well all night. Gombowski hit the hole. He pulls because of the read. Gets out to the edge and, and does a nice job. But that's going to come back. 26 seconds left here for the Lumberjacks. It's going to be first and 15 for them here. Like we talked about earlier, both teams running the option. It's it's uh, takes a lot of poise and practice by the quarterback to read uh, the the triple option. And both Ben Haynes and Alex Johns Moore and and Hunter Potter for the Lumberjacks have done a nice job on that tonight. It's going to be first and uh, 15 for the Lumberjacks here as Johns Moore under center from about the 40-yard line. Looking to run the option, and this time Gombowski does take the football and work his way all the way up down to the 40-yard line. Looks like we're going to get a late face mask too, and Jimmy Gombowski does not want to go down when he carries the football. Did an excellent job of getting north and south carrying people and Towards the end of the play there, looks like we have a face mask that's going to tack on 5 or 15 yards, depending on the official's determination if it was uh, severe or not. It's going to bring up a first and 10 for the Lumberjacks from the 40-yard line here in these last 20 seconds, excuse me, 19 seconds, as the officials sort out this face mask. It's going to be the big one. It's going to be 15, or excuse me, 10. So here at the 30-yard line, Alex Johns Moore brings the Lumberjacks up here with 19 seconds left. We have deep motion by Hunter O'Hare as we look to run the sweep, and Johns Moore keeps it. And excellent, excellent, excellent job by Matt Kolar. Again, staying at home. Didn't make the final tackle on it, but did not bite on the, on the boot by the quarterback. Stayed at home. Had uh, made Alex Johns Moore go inside and number 22, Cam Britz, and number 44, Devin Hayes make the tackle. That's going to be the end of the ball game. Fort Gratiot, the final, Fort Gratiot Lumberjacks 32, Holland Woods Warriors 14. Congratulations to both teams and both coaching staffs on, on a great season and a, and a uh, great game today. And stay tuned. Next we'll have Central and Chippewa in the nightcap here from Memorial Stadium. I'm Coach Casey Cachera signing off for CPHS 6. Have a great uh, night, and we'll see you next year.